Barclay Jones uh, webinar um, around Google for Jobs for Recruiters. I'm Terry Etherington from Appsco. Uh, I'm delighted to uh, work with uh, Barclay Jones on an ongoing relationship. I'll just tell you a little bit about the events that we've got coming up in the next couple of months. We've actually got our entire calendar for 2019 uh, confirmed now. So if you'd like to get your year planned out, do get in touch. Um, I'll just draw your attention to a couple of um, events, the pharmaceutical and the northern business forums that are taking place in January. There is a date change for the APSCO members meeting in London. It's now going to be on Wednesday, the 13th of February. That event is actually going to be a non-exec director's speed mentoring. So slightly different to some of our other members meetings that you might have gone to. Spaces for this as well will be limited. So make sure you keep your eyes out, um, eyes open for the announcement that that's actually available to book. Um, just a couple of other things. The In the Round is continuing. Um, Anne Swain is off to Bristol and Nottingham. They're the, the next couple that are coming up. Uh, and just for your you marketers out there, the marketing forum will be taking place on the 5th of March. Um, if you want to get involved with um, either myself about events or anyone from APSCO, if you just type APSCO into your chat facility, we'll be able to get in touch with you after the webinar. Um, that's it from us. Um, I'll pass over now to um, Lisa and Luke from Barclay Jones, who can tell us all about Google for Jobs. Thanks, guys. Hello, everybody. It's Lisa from Barclay Jones. Just so that we know that you can hear us all OK, can you go into your chat facility and tell us whether or not you are having a dry or a wet January? So dry or wet January. Just pop into your chat facility and let us know if you're dry. I'm having a dry January and a relatively dry February um, and a very, very wet March, I think is probably a polite way of putting it. And we're getting a lot of people talking. And AppsCo, do us a favor, love Liz, pop yourself on silent uh, so we don't hear you popping a cork at 12.03 on a Monday. Lovely. So it's interesting, actually, if we were to do like a poll and it would replace any bloody boring news about Brexit today, we'd say that the recruitment market doesn't get what dry January is, I think is probably... Luke, are you having a wet or a dry January? So, I, hi, hello everyone, I'm Luke. Um, I was attempting to have a dry January and five days in I failed and got told off by my other half. And his boss, me, because <laughs> I'm having a very dry January. Yeah, dry January so far. Tessa, keep going. So obviously all of you lovely people that are in a dry January are in my crew and the rest of you are with Luke. I think Luke's going to have more friends than me today. <laughs> Um, more, more drinking chums. It's, from the answers, it appears that way. It does appear that way. You bunch of weaklings. But then, to be fair, you've got tough jobs. So, you know, if you are all having a pins o'clock at three o'clock in the afternoon on a Monday, I kind of respect that. Right. So we know that chat works, which is brilliant. You may or may not have come across Barclay Jones before, but obviously we are basically here to make recruiters more successful and obviously their marketeers more successful. So, Ultimately, what we do is, and we've been doing this for a little while now, and we are award-winning recruitment advocates because we've also won AppsCo's um, Affiliate of the Year. So that basically means somebody out there thinks we're ace. Three things. We do recruiter success training, and we're about to launch a learning management system as well. So if you are looking to be trained by what we think are the best, drop us a line. We're going to be doing something called HIT training. Now, if you're into your fitness or whether or not you'd like to be or not, but you should be, high intensity interval training, we're developing some HIT training for recruiters to basically develop 30 minute sessions to make them extremely effective in some of the behaviors that they need to make more money, source more candidates, retain more clients, attract more colleagues into their own businesses. We'll help with your recruitment technology. So if you need advice on what tech to have within your business, how to implement it, and more importantly, how to make money from it, we do that. And a lot of what I spend my time on is mentoring the brightest marketeers out there, whether they be heads of global marketing 
at departments or their lovely uh, marketing managers and executives. That's what we're focused on. It's all about recruitment. It's all about tech and it's all about ROI or what we call the four C's, candidates, clients, colleagues and cash. So where on earth does Google for Jobs fit with this? Well, we're going to be talking about Google for Jobs throughout this session, but ultimately, and you're probably a bit, maybe you're not sick of hearing about it, I don't know, or maybe it's light relief from Brexit. But um, there's a lot of noise about Google for Jobs at the moment. But what we wanted to do was kind of go, for us, Google for Jobs is not about just about the job advert, it's about the success of any recruitment business. So Luke's got some fantastic hacks. So get your pens and papers ready or your Trello cards or your uh, your notes on your on your laptops. But the question I do have for you to begin with is, and I'm not going to necessarily read these out, so please don't think that all your competitors are going to get wind of what your plans are. But could you all just pop into your chat and tell me what are your goals for 2019? If, if, if you and I were going to have a coffee at the end of 2019 and you'd say, thank God I've managed to achieve blah, what would it be? What is it you are actually wanting to do with this year? Just jot some ideas down for me because I'm interested in sort of taking the temperature of the room. Pop into your chat. OK, so we're getting some answers through now. More conquer social media. Interesting. Hit target. Make new connections. Absolutely. We've got growth, making more offers, increasing website revenue, develop the client base, bring more client traffic, reduce costs, innovative IC solutions, better advert responses. Absolutely. We don't necessarily want more advert responses because actually we don't necessarily have the capability to convert everybody that applies so that's something to think about solid social media strategy hitting financial targets sourcing hard to find candidates i would actually suggest you need to attract more hard to find candidates i kind of feel i'm not saying sourcing is a yes well no i actually am i think attraction is 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 what recruitment is all about attraction is the one thing your clients probably don't have time to do for themselves so there's lots of little tips that we're going to go for but thank you very much someone's actually said here and i think this is actually really important enabling more time to play golf and less time headhunting now we can all go uh, that but it's kind of like why we exist i don't want more golf time i want more gym time or more kids time or less to kids time maybe we want more drinking time certainly we'll want that by the end of january so we need to stay very focused on what our overall goals are. And I would suggest to you being a digital marketing mentor that being better at social media is not a goal. It's a tactic, tactics, strategy, goals. Goal is to make more money. Strategy might be to use digital marketing. The tactic is to be better at social media. Something to think about there. That's just me kind of like, you know, waxing lyrical. Right. Brilliant. Thank you very much, everybody. So we're going to sort of talk about Google for Jobs because as far as we're concerned, every recruiter needs the right candidates to apply for their jobs, not just lots. They need the right ones. They equally need to make sure they've got the right clients. And when I work with recruiters and I say, you know, what are your key goals? Do you need more clients? Sometimes I'll hear, no, we've got plenty of jobs. And I'll be like, but are they the right jobs? Are they the jobs that you can actually work? Or have you just been given some jobs? And sometimes all of us have to sometimes work on, on pieces of business that are difficult to, to convert. So I'm a big fan of actually sometimes taking a really long, hard look at the, the, the conversions that you're, or the, the, the pieces of work that you're trying to convert, maybe the clients that you feel you should retain, and maybe look at having a good, hard, long look in the mirror and saying, are they the right clients for your business? And equally, more importantly, because we know that if you've got the right data and you've got the right processes and you've got the right systems, that you also need the right staff to convert all of that stuff into money. So obviously what we want to do is also help your recruiters be more effective, be more competitive and obviously spy, which sounds a bit negative, but it's flipping important in our market and it's never been easier to know what's going on out there. I've got a question for you though, and we're gonna start a poll on this one, just a very quick poll. I want to know, is your CRM first? Now the idea of this is all about is your CRM, whether it be Adapt, whether it be Bullhorn, whether it be Talent Rover Bullhorn or all of the Myriad, Firefish, etc., is it the first port of call for what you do? Do you source from it first? Do you even source from it before you advertise? Do you look at your leads and convert them from there? Or is it a poor mad aunt at Christmas that you feel that you have to invite over? She's a bit crazy or maybe a mad uncle, sorry to be sexist sat in the corner drinking sherry and you kind of feel that you need to have a chat with them but you're not massively engaged and it's that sort of thing you do at invoice perspective so something to think about is your crm first 
Lovely. Thank you very much, everybody. And actually, if I'm honest, it's a bit of a Brexit thing going on here. What do you think, Luke? It's, it's, it's alarming. <laughs> it's alarming. So you can probably see the data right now, but we've pretty much got almost a 50-50 split which is a bit of a shame because in my world of being in recruitment tech now for nearly 20 years, I'm a, I've been saying CRM first for as long as I can remember. GDPR taught us a lesson that if your data is clean and tidy, you can make your CRM first. LinkedIn has become, albeit a very critical part of the work, recruitment workflow, it's become potentially more critical than it should be. It's become an expense rather than an investment. And job boards are still the bane of a lot of people's lives. And I've got a lot of clients coming to me saying, Lisa, what do I need to do this year to reduce or eliminate my job board spend? So we've got to think about CRM being first. So ultimately, what we're focused on is Google for Jobs helping us with that. And I think it's a good opportunity for us to do that. OK, now I have a question for you. And again, I'm not going to necessarily share the data that's coming through, but I am interested in what CRM you actually have within your business. So could you please pop into your chat facility and type in which CRM or which recruitment system you guys and gals are currently using to store your candidates and clients and leads? Because again, we might be able to tailor some of the advice that we give you today to the kinds of things that you're using. Interesting, lovely. A nice blend. Lovely. That's great, everybody. Really appreciate you sharing that. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Lovely. OK, so the next question I've got for you is, are your jobs currently showing on Google for Jobs? Could you please just go into your chat facility and answer that question for me? Is it that, you know, do you do, are you aware of what's going on with Google for Jobs? You can give me a yes or a no or don't know. Is Google for Jobs actually working for you? Have you actually tried looking for your jobs and seeing whether or not they're in Google for Jobs? Lovely. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, everyone. Lovely stuff. That's good. Brilliant. OK, I'm going to move forward. Thank you. Right. As far as we're concerned, the reason that we're doing this webinar today is because obviously we partner with AppsCo, massively value what they can do for the industry. They're celebrating their 20th anniversary this year. So there's an argument to say they kind of know their stuff. And of course, we are celebrating our 18th or 8th anniversary this year. Although I've been in recruitment for 18 years. And I've always said that job adverts have a job to do. And, but often what they do is they create admin, they create lag, they cost money. Uh, they don't take enough time or they just basically are a massive distraction in the sales process. But if Google for Jobs has taught us anything in 2018 stroke 19, it's that job adverts are more important than we can ever appreciate. Because if Google for Jobs has decided or Google's decided that jobs are important, I think it's about time you listen to Auntie Lisa because I've been saying it for flipping years. And I don't want job adverts just to deliver candidates to you. I want them to deliver clients. I want clients who are probably searching for jobs out there right now for inspiration or maybe spying on their own competitors to see you coming up regularly, generating some really innovative copy, which is obviously helping you attract passive candidates, not just rabid candidates. And we know what rabid candidates look like. We obviously want more consultants or colleagues being attracted to our brand because every recruitment business I'm working with right now either wants to retain their best recruiters, resources, marketers, business back end, that kind of stuff, or they want to attract more. And ultimately, what they want to do as well is make more money, be more profitable. So if jobs have a job to do, and if we were running a session, I'd ask you some questions, but we ain't got time for that today. And you're here for me to dance like a monkey, so I will. We want to increase relevant responses. We want to attract passive talent. We want to place passive talent before it's even had a chance to speak to our competitors. We clearly want to attract and retain clients as well. So we need to be doing a flipping good job of the assignments they give us. And a flipping good job is not taking the spec that an HR department has created because it needs to be compliant and posting it and making sure there's no typos. A flipping good job is spending 10 to 20 to 30 minutes recrafting innovatively marketing that role and ultimately making sure that Google spots it and Luke will spend a bit of time with you in a second talking about how to make that happen. 
we clearly want extra talent to, to spec out. Now, a question for you. Pop back into your questions. Give me to the nearest year how many years you've all been in recruitment. Give me a number. How long? Have we got some doyens or some emperors in the room? Someone with a 22 exclamation mark. So some of us have been in the recruitment industry a long time. Some of us not so, but it probably feels like we have because <laughs> so much has changed. And you're only as good as your last place and all the cliches. I think I've got a 30 here. Crikey, John, I might be calling you at some stage to have a chat, swap some war, war stories. But I think it's safe to say back in the day, and correct me if I'm wrong, the Simons and the, well, there's lots of Simons, actually, there seems to be a trend here. People who are called Simon have been in recruitment a long time, <laughs> Luke, look at that. But for a lot of you out there that have been in recruitment a while, the process was really simple. You'd craft a really cool advert. You'd charge a fortune for it. And then you'd get some really good responses, one of which you'd place, and the rest you'd spec out. Do we still do that? I'm coming across recruiters when I suggest that as a process, look at me like I'm crazy. But actually, if you've got eight great candidates out of a really good job advert, why aren't you placing one and then specking out the others? Why aren't you working with your marketing department to push those CVs out to your great clients, seeing which clients click on that email marketing pro, uh, campaign, and that's your call list. That, to me, is really intelligent, clever marketing. Less candidates, more placements, dare I suggest. And someone says they're doing it well, well while they're listening to me. Andrew, I love the fact that you think you can multitask. That's all I'll say. Great stuff. So obviously what we want to do is do less, do more with less, not less with more, because actually there's an argument to say we are doing less with more right now as, a, as a, a team of recruiters. We clearly want to put clients back in their boxes. So we want them to look at our job efforts and go, damn it, I can't do that. Damn it, they know their stuff. Damn it, I'm so glad I've given that to them. Damn it, I'm not going to argue on the fee. We clearly want more contacts and followers. So when we advertise that job through LinkedIn, even if it's just a crummy um, status update, we want more people looking at our profile so they stick to our little web, our spider's web, and we can convert them into bullhorn or talent rover candidates. And ultimately, we want to attract new staff because our competitors are watching us all day long. But wouldn't it be lovely if they called us and said, I love what you're doing. Can I come and work for you, please? And I'm working with lots of internal recruiters right now who would love that problem. Do me a favor. Grade your job adverts out of 10. 10 is you place and spec out candidates for every single job you advertise. One is, damn it, I need to open a cake shop because this ain't working. Grade your jobs out of 10, please. Let's see what numbers we're getting in. Some people are giving themselves sevens and eights, a couple of you, but the majority around the four to five mark, which is not a great testimony for the thing that we say we're really good at, for the thing that we advertise, for probably the minimal amount of marketing we do do. We need to be absolutely excellent. Now, a hack for you to think about is this. I always say when we're running our job adverts training, we do these two and a half to three hour workshop for recruiters to really get them exploding any myths around how to write a job advert, to create some innovation, to get those job adverts placed on Google, and ultimately to get them more candidates, more clients, more colleagues in cash. The first thing we say is read your current job adverts out loud, because if you are feeling uncomfortable because you can't embellish them. If you're feeling uncomfortable, if you could get a candidate in and read your job advert out loud, but you feel that whilst you are reading it out loud, you'd have to make some changes to it, that's when you know you've got a challenge. So that's something to think about. We are going down the spray and pray route, and we have been for some time now because we've got so many access to so much different, so many different marketing tools. This fear of missing out means we're spending as little time as possible crafting it. We feel that we're marketing it effectively, but actually the average recruiter is writing an advert within five to 10 minutes and then posting it once on their LinkedIn profile and then spraying it across the job boards and wondering why they're only being attacked by rabid candidates. And of course, what we want is for it to maybe us to reverse that, spend a little bit more time crafting it, improving that very crappy click through rate that we've got here. Because what we don't want you to do is reverse spam yourself, sending out crappy adverts, getting back crappy candidates. And we equally don't want you making your job look really easy. Could you please tell me via the poll question that's coming through now, how long you actually currently spend writing a job advert so that you put the phone down, theoretically you start writing it straight away, although we have come across recruiters that take two or three days to get to that piece of admin, as they call it. 
but tell us how long you're spending crafting that advert. Now, I'm not suggesting that there's a right or way, wrong way of doing this because some of you clever clogs out there might be able to craft what we consider to be an excellent and innovative crafty advert that Google can see within five minutes. But I must stress when we're brought on site to train recruiters on this, we often find that the ones that are spending anything less than 20 minutes are simply copy pasting stuff and doing a bit of proofing and then firing it out and not really getting the responses that they need, which obviously means that if they're doing it in that way, that Google's not going to really get a chomp of it either. Right, that's lovely. Thank you very much for that. Okay, so what we don't want to be doing is posting and hiding either. So a little hack for you today, and Luke will talk more about this when he talks for Google for Jobs, but if you are advertising on behalf of the Secret Service and you want spies to find your roles, then keep on going with those sorts of things that you can see there. Keep going and you'll do an absolute treat there. You'll only get the hackers out there applying. But the majority of your candidates are sales managers. They want to work for specific business types. They want more than great benefits. They want specific things that are going to help them with their life chances. And an excellent salary is a very subjective thing. Um, and also adding it to job boards might hide it as well. God forbid, I don't want to get on the bad side of job boards today. But um, that's a surefire way of attracting the wrong candidates. And someone's asked a question, sales mangas. You wouldn't believe how many sales manga jobs we find when we search the job boards because recruiters can't spell. Or rather, they can spell. The very intelligent creatures, nine times out of ten, they're just working very quickly. hope that answers your question, Chris. So how are you going to or how are you actually going to market your jobs? So the idea of this is Google for Jobs is the ultimate marketing hack, but there's a kind of theory that you don't have that much control over it wrong. Luke's going to prove you wrong on that one. But there are some other things that you can do as well as Google for jobs. And when we run our sessions, we go into this in a little bit more detail. But Loom is one of my most favorite hacks for marketing roles. Now, whenever we run this session on behalf of our clients and we do these in-house courses, we always say the following. And I'm going to make sure I've said this very clear. Check with your marketing department before you do anything crazy like something different to what you're doing right now. Check with your IT department that you're able to do this. Run it past them. But Loom is a fantastic bit of kit that's not only good for job adverts, it's good for client pitches. So if you find a client's website and they're advertising a role on it, there's nothing stopping you from pressing the Loom button, free of charge, people, and having the uh, image or the website with the job advert on it and saying, John, I've spotted that you've got a role for a sales manager within your business. I've just done a quick search of my database and I've got five people that match this. Can you give me a call? The great thing about Loom is it's video, so it's different. It's a bit of a magpie approach, which is good. Magpies collect shiny things and people like shiny things because they're attractive and the web is full of non-shiny, very boring things. It takes seconds to create and you can see when people have clicked on it, which is helpful to you. Put the word Loom in your chat if you think you're going to give that a go. It is very cute and it is very free. Lots of loom, 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 looms. Lots of exclamations. It's brilliant for candidates. You advertise a job and you say, John, look at the job on my website. You might not be looking right now, but trust me, from what I can tell from your web, pet, from your LinkedIn page, and if you've ever used Crystal Nose, which is a fantastic app for disk profiling your candidates without even meeting them, it'll tell you what language to use when you're pitching Crystal Nose with a C and a K-N-O-W-S, not nose, as in nose on my face. Um, you put those two bits of kit together, extremely exciting times. We are nothing if we're not some big hack company. So... Someone said here, can you do a mail shot approach on Loom? Of course you could, um, all depending on the mail shot systems that you use. There's nothing, nothing stopping you from putting a link to the Loom within your mail shot. And then when you send it out, you can obviously see who's clicked on what. Very clever way to connect everything together. So that's just a little hack for you. But check with your marketing department 
that this isn't going to destroy your brand. That's all I'll say. And it shouldn't, to be frank. It should be absolutely as easy as pie. Because we've got to remember the job advert is not the spec. We've got to think about calls to action for your ideal candidates, not just rabid dogs. We've got to make sure that um, they need to massively improve. You've got to have a process for marketing the role beyond a single web page or a LinkedIn update. And then ultimately, your lovely Bullhorn Adapt, other CRM systems are going to be first because you're attracting the right people. So I'm going to hand you over to the lovely Luke now, who's going to talk to you a bit more about Google for Jobs, give you some ideas about typical hacks that you can engage with to make Google for Jobs work. But ultimately, think about the scene that I've set. We've got to improve the copy. If all you think that Google for Jobs is, is just another bit of kit to put on top of your copy, you need to rethink the journey before you get onto Google for Jobs. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Thank you very much for that, Lisa. Uh, so for those of you that don't know me, and I know a few people do, because I can see some familiar names on there. It's good to see you online again. Um, I'm a recruitment trainer at Barker Jones, so I travel around the country, uh, as well as uh, show my face online every now and again, to deliver uh, lots of recruitment training, such as writing job adverts, Google for Jobs, LinkedIn, Adapt, Bullhorn, etc. Um, Google for Jobs is very exciting to to, to, to those of us out there um, who obviously um, talk about recruitment technology a lot, uh, are influencing within the, the, the industry, we're all getting very excited about what Google are now bringing to the table and having a, a big boy like Google on board is just generally exciting for the recruitment space, which a little little bit of a laugh here, which I don't find it, oh, it's <laughs> difficult to stomach actually when I consider all my friends that are recruiters, my missus is a recruiter, Your and I only work with recruiters uh, we've never had always the best relationship with google but we are very optimistic that that will change um i just threw that in just for a bit of interest so why why do we do the work we do in terms of going out and training our our recruiter recruitment clients on all this well for me uh, and the, this is a genuine quote from a training room where i've delivered a workshop people have told me listen luke Adverts, they're rubbish, they don't work, they're not for me. Um, obviously, we don't believe that, and Google have spent an awful lot of money on uh, developing their Google Jobs platform because they also don't believe it. So it's not totally a game set and match for adverts. If, if anything, we hope that this is going to demonstrate the opposite and they will be coming fully back to life. A lot of our recruiters also tell us that if they do know the stats, and, and often, unfortunately, these things aren't always tracked, but when recruiters do know their figures, they're often, they're often telling us that this percentage that's on screen is much lower. This is a stat from one of my recruiters that really value uh, the job advert, and they've managed to get 60% of their placements from advert responses, which is much higher than the, the, the average that I get quoted in, in the training room. So we, we're not just here to tell you, oh, we think this is going to work, actually. We think adverts are good. We actually know that they can be effective when you... When you, when you take the right approach to uh, not only writing those adverts, but also marketing them out. Uh, so a little, uh, little bit of uh, interesting stats for you. So what is the background? OM Google um, launched in the States in July 2017. I've popped a few notable countries on this slide so you have um, an insight into, into kind of where the UK came along. We were the second country in Europe to get Google last summer so we're talking about july 2018 uh, there's around 40 50 countries that are now live with google jobs throughout the world and um, just reviewing that poll from earlier a lot of uh, you guys on the webinar did mention that you didn't really think that google were your, your jobs were shown in google or maybe you've not looked into it so i'm going to treat it uh, like you've not seen the platform and we'll go We'll go through what it is and what they've brought to the table. What they want effectively is to have the, 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 the whole Google effect in the recruitment world. So since this platform has been live in the States, we already know that the most common job search in the US is, for example, project manager jobs near me. So you're having, you've got your location services switched on. I can, I can speak to Google if I like, ask the question, and it's giving me that really tailored experience. And that's that's the vision, that's what they want. A really interesting stat as well, um, and I was very surprised when I, when I read this, that initially uh, Google realized that 30% of Google searches were related to jobs, whether that's how to qualify um, 
to be able to perform a particular job, applications for jobs, and, and generally applying for jobs and finding jobs. So there's a huge amount of searching going off in Google uh, for jobs, for recruitment. So they wanted a big piece of that. Hence, they set off on the mission for Google Jobs. So that's where we all started. Um, Google, so this is what we know. Um, Google marketed the fact that their main goal, their main motivation for developing Google Jobs was to improve the candidate experience. And what I mean by that is um, we, we see it as one of the only bits of recruitment technology that's there for the candidate and not necessarily to sell to recruiters as it stands. So what they want to do is uh, Joe Bloggs is applying for a sales manager job. What they want is for his experience to be simple, to be effective, to be able to, 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 to browse through jobs um, without having that massive amount of duplication, flying around different job boards. And that's their main goal. Uh, we also think um, that they're flexing their muscles. You know, they are the kings of search. There's a lot of other job boards that have tried to run their recruitment technology against Google's. Uh, they didn't like the fact that Google came along and said that they were better than the others. They've actually done a lot of testing in the background and realized that, in fact, Google's was the most advanced search platform out there for jobs. So it is very good it, um, to quote um, uh, to quote uh, a recruitment leader at a recent event. It kicks everybody else's ass, which is interesting. Um, think about the power that Google have now in terms of how much data they've got. So that's going to be worth an awful lot of money if they know that Luke Lynham is applying for director level jobs and I'm signed into my Gmail account. They, they see what I'm looking at. They see what I'm browsing and what I'm interested in. They know where I'm looking. Uh, they know a lot about the types of roles in terms of gauging my potential, my personality. That data is worth a lot of money. They can pitch uh, and sell advertising for products that a director might buy rather than entry level positions, etc. So from Google's point of view, it's a, that, that's, that's a big win for them. And that's obviously a big motivation behind the scenes. Um, what we do need to know is, um, I think what's key is, is is making sure that your jobs are A, in Google. And we're going to touch on that in a second. But then when, when they are in Google, how can we optimize the job content so, so it performs well? Um, from there, we can then start tracking data, monitoring well. Are particular sites performing well for us? You know, one job board may be performing much better on Google then other job boards and we need, to, we need to try and be aware of that. Um, what we do now is eight, depends on who quotes this, I've, said, I've, I've had different figures. Um, the last, the, the most up to date uh, figure was 86% of candidates are starting their job hunt in Google. Now that's a massive, obviously a massive amount. So if, you're, if your jobs aren't ranking well in Google, for me, that's a massive, massive concern. Um, granted, what are the other 14% doing? Well, a lot of people are probably heading directly to uh, those niche job boards because that's where they've applied before, um, etc. Or potentially other other uh, search uh, websites. Now, <clears throat> about three months after Google being live in the UK, um, a survey told us that 53% of recruiters weren't Google ready. Now, what I mean by that is the jobs that they were posting on their own website were not appearing in Google. Um, the stats that you've just pinned over by answering Lisa's question. Actually, isn't too dissimilar at first glance. I've not looked at the full data properly, uh, but there's a lot of people that have, have stated on there that their jobs aren't appearing in Google Jobs. Now, that's a massive gap in the market for those of us that are uh, appearing in Google Jobs because there's less competition in there. Um, don't get me wrong. If you're posting to the, to, the, to the big players in the job board world, absolutely your jobs will be um, appearing in there, except for Indeed. So when Google launched, um, indeed said, no, no, we're not going to partner with you on this. We're not going to appear in Google Jobs. Um, they've effectively changed their business model. Um, Google are getting all the traffic that they previously had when they were dominating right at the top of a Google search. So that's just a little bit of background information. Obviously, any questions on any of this as I'm talking through, please do ping them through. And if we have time for uh, the, the questions at the end, we'll review them. If not, we'll ping out answers to those questions. So applicant user interface, and then what I'm going to briefly attempt to do is just pop in here and show you. Now, let's say I'm looking for uh, project manager roles and leads. So what I might be doing as a candidate would is I'm going to type into Google project manager jobs leads. Now, sometimes you get the ads at the top still. 
absolutely fine. In this instance, I haven't. Um, directly below that, or in this instance at the very top, we've got the new Google Jobs panel. Um, if I scroll down a little bit, indeed, they're still there, um, but they're now, because they become lower than Google Jobs, we already know that people are pretty much clicking straight in here. Um, now, please note, um, top right, I'm logged into my Google account. So Google are tracking everything that I'm doing. They know which websites I'm going into, what I'm searching for. But if I just give you a very brief overview, and apologies if you've been playing around in this uh, platform before, uh, I know there's a lot of people on the webinar that haven't, so I'm going to go back to basics. Um, essentially, I've, I've typed project manager jobs leads at the top. Um, I've then got some additional filters. Now, these can be really, really useful, obviously not only from a candidate's point of view, but if I'm a recruiter, um, I see this as a bit of a one-stop shop for seeing the market that I'm recruiting within. So you've got various categories, and you might want to filter on the ones that are relevant to you. I could even do it by job title. So think of that as industry and job title. Um, obviously, a real key one here is location. And interestingly enough, what um, initially happened was Google launched in the States without a radius search. Um, you could literally just pick multiple areas. And obviously, in this instance, um, we've now got a radius searching. So I can just update this and say, right, I want, I want to look at 30 miles from Leeds. Not a problem. I can filter on other things like date, date posted and type, etc. But the two big ones that I want to show you here is company type. Now, I've got two approaches to this. Um, I might know that I recruit for project managers in the finance space, so I might want to filter on finance. And I can see all the roles that are out there um, and, 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 and use that as a lead chasing tool. Um, I might spy on other jobs, try and steal some good content, find out what, what, what just, know, just knowing my space. However, there is also a staffing filter. So I can quickly filter on staffing and see which other recruiters have got project manager roles out there at the moment. Now I've chosen quite a broad topic so you can see all these options. So a really good way of spying on your competitors. Additionally, when I click on employer, I've now got a list of agencies, recruiters, executive search uh, businesses that are under the staffing umbrella that are advertising Currently, and I can further filter on that. So see this as a, as, as a BD tool. Um, granted, it's not the entire um, job market because some of the recruiters' websites and clients, if they're, if they're hiring directly and posting on their own career sites or on their own websites, they might not be ranking in Google at the moment because they've not set their, set their website up to do so. So it's something to think about. We know that presently, there's a lot more recruiters um, showing in Google Jobs than there are clients who are hiring directly. Um, so that just gives you an idea. So don't be too surprised if you start clicking around and think, well, there's a lot of recruiters that are advertising here. That's, that They've got the, the biggest share of the market at the minute in terms of place, um, space on Google. Okay, um, so you may have noticed I'm just in the jobs area here. I just obviously can click through my jobs at the moment. Um, and just browse through. Nice and straightforward. You've also got a little save tab, which is really, really cool. So as a recruiter, I'm looking at this particular role here. I might want to bookmark it. Click the little bookmark, and that goes into my save. So I can refer back to these later, no problem. And my biggest hack so far, this is my number one tip that I'd be doing straight away if you've not done this already, is I'd be setting up some job alerts. So put your search criteria in and apply your relevant filters. And then I would immediately turn on email alerts. Just a little toggle down here. That's going to then send an email through to my Gmail account. If I come into alerts here, I can set that instantly, daily or weekly. You could always set up an email rule to forward that onto your work account. By all means, set up a dummy Gmail account um, for, for this specific purpose. And then get those leads coming through fresh. Make sure you're not missing out on these. And it saves you um, a, a, a few a few hours um, over over, over, over a long period, having to having to hunt through for these leads. Um, you'll have all the big job boards in there, as I've mentioned, indeed won't be there. Um, lovely, so that gives you a little bit of a, a, a feel for the UI if you've not looked at it already. You can see some filters on there. Um, a couple of things to point out as well is when I start reading through this job advert, for example, and I'm just picking what uh, job adverts at random, um, you can see 
little things like typical peer glass door reviews. So they started introducing some comparisons and um, giving some estimates in there so you can kind of benchmark where that role, are, role is at for, from a salary point of view. Um, glass door reviews, indeed reviews, etc., now become really important because that's the first thing that's been put in front of your candidate's nose when they're applying. So if there's ever a time to get some good reviews on there and encourage your staff to do that and deal with any negatives, that's absolutely important right now. So we've got a few filters for you to be aware of. Lovely. Right. There are some important key features which have basically meant Google have differentiated themselves from other job boards as an aggregator as a search engine what they have, 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 have predominantly tried to do is focus on the deduplication of job adverts so i'm going to show you what that means in google because that's a little bit easier um rather than luke lineham's applying for a project manager role rather than me having to historically look on cw jobs uh, the, the, the agency's own website and then nuevo what google have done is scraped the web and realized that this job advert has been advertised um, in three different places. They've scraped it together into one, really intelligent AI. And then what that does is give you the option on which um, which site you want to apply through. And that's essentially what they've done there. Um, obviously, from a candidate's point of view, it means I don't have to browse that job multiple times. And then I click uh, on, on my preferred site. So think about how are your job adverts showing? Are you advertising on multiple job boards? Is the potential for some of those job boards to be removed longer term? We're not suggesting you go crazy with this right now, but longer term, wouldn't it be great if your website's performing really well? Um, you don't get that initial benefit of, of coverage and spread by, by dotting it across four or five different platforms and, and then dominating that front page, which we've seen historically. So that's definitely something to think about. Deduplication is key. Um, Previously, as a, as a, this is just a visual, what I've just explained. You may have had to look at the same advert multiple time, and now it'll deduplicate it to save you that, that precious admin time that candidates have. And that's an example there. So if there's two other big things that as recruiters, I think it's important you're aware of. One of them is location. Um, I've, I've demonstrated the radius search. Google wants accurate data. Currently, if you didn't put a specific location, and by specific, I'm talking address postcode. If you didn't do that right now, it could still, your advert would still show in Google, just necessarily wouldn't rank as high as an advert that's got specific address on. Now, in the world of top secret adverts and recruitment, because we don't want to give the game away to competitors, that obviously puts us at a slight disadvantage in that respect. And by having specific details, such as postcodes, what that does is it unlocks Google's commute times. So if I were to come in here, I'd get a commute time on the roll for any specific uh, positions. And, and again, that's just supplying that, that, that additional service to the candidate to take it to the next level. So location is really, really important. Um, now, currently, I mentioned it's optional. You will still feature in Google Jobs. Um, but we have heard that potentially they will withdraw that at some point. They, potentially roll that out in the states first but just just keep an eye on that be aware that if they make that mandatory to have a specific address and that's something that's going to impact on whether your job adverts display in there or not and moving on it's pretty much the same with salary and um, before google jobs we've always encouraged recruiters to put salary on their job adverts i mean these these, these stats have been around a while but 72 percent of candidates looking for salary first we don't volunteer so it's obviously important uh, whilst the other benefits are really important as well, we need that salary on there or at least a bracket. Uh, and a two thirds of candidates tell us that they won't apply for a role that doesn't have a salary. I totally get that. And, and, and if anything, I'd expect that to be a little bit higher in, in some markets. So we definitely need one. Um, at the moment, candidates cannot filter on salary within Google Jobs. I pointed out those estimates and comparisons. Um, so what Google are trying to do is, is, is demonstrate to the candidate where your salary compares to the rest of the market. So just be aware of that, that candidates are seeing that straight away. And again, you can post a job right now without a salary on there, and it will show in Google, but it won't rank as high as a job advert with a salary on there. And, and we have to watch that space, that might change. So you can see here a visual of where a job has a salary, and then one where a job doesn't have a salary. 
and then right down at the bottom, we've got a salary comparison. Google will only pull content through in terms of the, the words in your advert. It won't pull visuals through. So you can see here on Google's very own career site, they've put a, a nice, bright, engaging image at the top of this job advert. Um, they, they only pulls the text through. So you can't hide behind um, a, a, a well-made asset. You've still got to get a really engaging, really positive um, uh, advert out there, which can really market and sell that position. You've got to do the work uh, with your advert content. Lovely stuff. Um, I think we've covered the job, the job board piece. It's indeed the, uh, the ones that aren't ranking on there. But yeah, you, obviously you'll get these slides, so you've got this for your reference. All the big boys are out there. If you're using a smaller, more niche job board and you haven't asked the question already, it's worth clarifying and checking with them and doing a little bit of research on Google just to make sure that any jobs that you're posting to those job boards are in fact showing in Google Jobs. You, I would expect the most are. Um, I've already, to a degree, hinted at the, their advanced um, search functionality. Um, the, 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 the machine, so basically, it will learn your behavior. If Luke Lynham, as a, as, as a candidate, is always applying for roles in a particular town, uh, with particular job titles, with particular uh, factors, it will remember that. It will even remember which job boards I'm clicking into. So it will try and tailor its service to me as a user because it wants to add that that high level of, of candidate experience. So that, that's something to be aware of. Um, over time, we could all sit in a room together and all search for, 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 for the same job and potentially get tailored different results, depending on how much we've used the platform. And that's all working away in the background. So it's obviously really key um, that to be on Google, you partner with the right job boards that are already ranking well in Google and are not ranking at all. What would be great is to optimize your website so that the jobs that you're posting on your website not only appear in Google, step one, but also rank really well. Uh, there's lots of criteria. Google published this information completely free of charge. You follow the instructions and make sure that your website's set up properly and that your content plays into the hands of Google. And um, it will remember if people are clicking onto your website and staying on there a while, great, Google no, Google remembers that and says, next time Luke Lyman's looking for a job, brilliant. He likes this website, he's always on there and he applies for jobs on there. So it is a free service. Um, we know that it's gonna learn and improve and get better and better. We've already seen that in the States, uh, that, that a lot of the salary comparisons have significantly improved. Um, when Google launched, there was a few glitches, and I think I read a couple of comments just on the chat panel that um, you get the other, other business showing when it tries to deduplicate those uh, those job adverts. There's the odd glitch where it's, it's not quite doing it right, and um, it's getting much, much better at that. Um, and, and, and the idea is that we're going through the smart searching, it's bringing back more relevant job adverts. So we should get more relevant applications because the candidates aren't spending as long trying to find the right jobs. They're getting a much better experience. They've then been able to apply for the roles that are genuinely and truly relevant to them. And hopefully we get that exposure. So in terms of a couple of the recruiters that I've, I've been training recently face to face, we've actually seen um, much, much better responses since Google went live in terms of adverts. They're being seen and um, they're getting the applications and we're getting relevant applications. Uh, that's the key thing, relevant. And, and obviously to, by targeting passive applicants, that's the way we can grow and get and get the genuine candidates that, 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 we're, that, that we're truly looking for. So we know that top, to, to recap, and I appreciate that was a, a fair amount of information for you guys that haven't looked at Google Jobs before. I may have just clarified some bits for the guys that I've trained previously. Um, but to recap, we know that top secret jobs naturally won't succeed on Google compared to the jobs with a high level of detail because that's what Google want. They want data, they want information, they want detail. We've seen the big change for Indeed. Um, that's been happening for, for, for some time now. Uh, a good job board is going to, will, at least initially, thrive on, on, on Google because if they're performing really well, they'll continue to perform well and Google will reward that with, with, with boosting rankings. So the good job boards out there that are genuinely doing a good job will find that they'll, they'll rank really well on Google. It's the smaller job boards that aren't necessarily investing 
um, in, in being go totally Google friendly and on board with all that. Um, so there's quite a few takeaways. A um, couple of our clients are, are, are even sort of demonstrating that they're, they're pushing for more retained business. Um, a lot of people that we ask say, well, actually, I'll give the client name away if it's retained and there are rules. Mm. Well, that's great for Google because you'll get that level of detail. You can name the client, you can give postcodes, you can potentially be more specific with salaries. So a few predictions in there for you. Now, just clock watching, and I appreciate we've had a few questions through, which I'm just going to open up now. <laughs> I think we spotted a typo on there, which is great. Just goes Brilliant back to one of, one of Lisa's points. So good spot on that one, Luke. Um, I'm just reading these questions, see if I can answer a couple very briefly. So a couple of questions about ranking. Um, I'm pretty sure we could probably send out a link, but Google give us this information. There's, there's a variety of markers that need to be in place, and that, that's, that's having your field set up correctly um, on, 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 on your website. Or essentially, if you're posting through a job board, they should be taking care of that. And then it's making sure that the information's in the right field and it's mapped out. Google are allowed to troll your site and, and access that information. So there's quite a lot of different factors so essentially, that's something that you that, that, that you'll need to look into. Um, whoever manages your website, if you've got techies on that side to look into that, I would absolutely encourage that. Um, see if, there's, if I can answer one more because there, there were about three or four then about ranking. So I've had a question from Matt about some of the job boards. Um, yeah, I think I think I think you'll find that Matt that a lot of the big players on the job boards um, are off the, are off the ranking high at the top because they spent that time and, and energy to be truly Google friendly. Now, if we can replicate that with our own with our own website, that becomes um, very very much more cost effective. But yeah, until we start doing that as an industry and really investing in our own websites to compete with the likes of job boards, unfortunately. They're, they're going to rank higher because they're doing all the things that Google have told them to do. And, we're, and, and as a recruiter, we're simply not. Once we start doing that, you'll, you'll see that your website start competing. Uh, Sarah, are LinkedIn jobs included? They are indeed. Yep, LinkedIn uh, decided that they wouldn't do an indeed and go head to head. Um, LinkedIn jobs absolutely do display. And I'll see if there's any more that I can quickly answer. Appreciate it. you're all very, very busy people. Don't worry, we can always tackle them outside yeah, I think the session. I think there's two or three which we can come back to outside of this session. Brilliant. Lovely. Lovely. I think the thing to consider, ladies and gents, is if even if you don't like what Google are trying to do by sucking up your data, you need to think about if you are going to insist on marketing your jobs with a bag on your head, and what we mean by that is if you can't talk about the client, if you can't talk about the salary, there is something to be said for you're going to have to compensate in other ways. You're going to have to just radically improve your copy, your marketing. And the, certainly the thing that we do when we run our workshops is we say, right, writing the copy is just one part of the process. Marketing it in the right places and in the right way and pitching it in the right way has to be a really, really vital part of the process. So question for you, I want you to pop into your chat. If you're going to do anything with what you've learned today, what is it going to be? What are you actually going to take away from today? What are you? You've spent 45 minutes with us now. What are you going to do differently in your business? Anything specifically that you're going to take with you that's going to help you move this forward? Because Google for Jobs ain't going anywhere. It's got the word Google in it. And traditionally, they tend to either kill things off really quickly, and we never hear about them, or they take a while to kill things off, or they become a lexicon, don't they? We Google things now. And obviously, they own YouTube as well. So we need to obviously take note of that. Right. So lots of stuff coming through in terms of takeaways. Obviously, the thing to consider is if you feel that this is something you really need to fix in your business, i.e. job adverts are not admin. They are there to generate the four C's, candidates, clients, colleagues and cash. If you need any more help with that, then just type in the word adverts into your chat facility and we'll send you some information and some further hacks not only on other things that we can do outside of this session, but some information on the workshops that we run as well. <laughs> Someone's off to have some fried chicken. Brilliant. So people are taking away Loom, alert function, sit down with marketing in a nice way. Get them a cake. They're lovely people that are just often asked to do things that are not going to make you any money. 
fantastic. Lots of really, really good stuff here. Don't just see this as a flash in the pan. This is going to be massively disruptive to your day jobs if you don't get it right and really helpful to your day jobs if you do get it right. Remember, we set the scene at the beginning. Job adverts have an immense positive impact if done in the right way, and they can absolutely kill your day if you do them in the wrong way. Right, everybody. Thank you very, very much for coming to the session today. Don't forget you can engage with Barclay Jones online. We are voted one of the top blogs of the year last week by the lovely UK recruiter. And that is the third year on the trot that that's happened. So we obviously seem to know what we're talking about or we're paying the right people. We have a load of downloads on our website. We have loads of videos on our YouTube channel, all about recruiter success and marketeer success, which ultimately leads to recruitment leader success. So please log in, grab some of those. And if you want links to our podcasts or our videos, just put the word podcast or videos in your chat facility and we'll send those on to you as well. I hope today has been useful to you. Time to spend on your desk and on your business and on your strategy. Hope to bump into you soon. You take care, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye.